Now I don't know if I, I'm all choked up over here. Okay. Uh, wow. I think you should just keep pre, I think you should just keep teaching because you're doing pretty good. <laughs> wow, you guys look really good. You guys are beautiful. Um, I know that Josh and I have some kind of connection with every single person in this room. And I'm just so blessed that you chose to be here with us today. Um, maybe not knowing, like he said, exactly what we were going to present. But hopefully you've been around us long enough to know that I'm a little crazy. And you're going to get what you came for. <laughs> okay. But in all seriousness, what I'm going to present right now is the simplest thing that has shifted my perspective has shifted my paradigm, and it, shep- it has shifted my, my point of view, and it has governed my heart. So I would say about 2018, 2019, um, the Lord started working on me. I was pretty resistant to some things, but I had an encounter with the Lord in 2019 that changed my life forever. And it wasn't long after that that... Um, a couple years later, you know, just kept encountering and kept encountering. And that's when I decided, that's when the Lord asked me, actually, he asked me if I would quit my job. Um, my job, I had worked really hard to have. I had degrees behind my name. I had my own door with a plaque with my name over it. And I had built clientele and I had relationships built. And so it wasn't a thing that was super easy to lay down. But in the same token, it was the easiest, most rewarding thing I've ever done because I ran into his arms. Um, so I'm going to start out with, with just establishing the fact that we are in. We are, Justin Paul Abraham is somebody that I listen to, I really look up to. He's actually wrote, he wrote a book that I wasn't sure about, and I read it, eh, not sure, and then I went and heard him, and it, the things that he said carried so much weight, it changed my life. So the, he, 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 I might reference him a few times, but this is one thing that he says, that we are all innies. <laughs> I love it. You know, we're all innies. Uh, we're not outies. We get to finally be on, in the in crowd. And I don't know if you, but, well, about you, but if you've ever been on the out crowd, it feels really good to be on the in, in, the, in, the in crowd. So I'm just going to establish that with Father, we are in. Okay? So I'm going to start. I'm probably going to read a lot of scripture because for me, that's what builds ground in my heart. That's where I get traction. So I'm going to be spitting out scripture. Feel free to write down the address. You can look at it later or write the whole thing down. I'm primarily going to be using um, two translations. One is the Passion Translation, um, and the other one is ESV or NIV, kind of interchangeably. So um, first, first one is 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new creation. So it reads, it reads in NIV, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. And so what I love to do is dissect um, that word in, the enfolded into Christ part. It is, comes from a Greek word called, and it's spelled E-V, just ev. I believe that's how you would pronounce it. I could be wrong. And I am going to use this word. If you ever want any really good, ref, um, like, this is where I'm getting my all of my points, is Blue Letter Bible. It is a website you can go to. You can dissect scriptures. You can, oh, it's amazing. You can dive as deep in there as you want to. Um, so they use the Strong's Concordance in there. So Strong's G1722. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the Greek ev is a primary position. It's a place or state. Relation of rest. A place or a state. A relation of rest. So every time you hear this word about being in, it's we're inside this state. And when I think about it, 
um, it, another way you can summarize it, it's, the Strong says, it's in the interior of some hole within the limits of some place. That's a lot of jumbo words, but basically it's this. This is a hole right here, and we're in. That's it. So anytime you read the word that you are in Christ, you're right there in the middle. You are inside. You're enfolded. You're inside. You can't get any closer. You're in there. So I'm going to reference that a few times. That's the picture. I'm a good artist, right? Okay. Um, and then in John 14, 20, it says, So when that day comes, you will know that I am living in the Father and that you are one with me, for I will be living in you. You're living in the Father, and he's living in us. And so in the ESV, it says, in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. I think he's trying to get a, his point across. You know, he's in us, we're in him. And so, oh, this wants to run away on me. Okay, I have one more thing I'm going to do, so... Um, in Colossians 3.3, 3 it says, For you have died, and your life is hidden within God. So this is a now word. For you have died, and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. So wait, we're hidden in Christ, and then we're hidden in God. And so this word hide is hide is to, so again, I've broken down that hidden word. I went in there and I studied it, and it's, it says it's to hide, conceal, escape notice. So I, I probably should have left that up there. But we are so concealed inside of him. Who are we seeing? Who is, who is being presented you know, in, that, in that oneness? Our life is so yoked and meshed with Christ that you cannot notice us from him, for we are one. And so um, I'm going to read, let me see where I want to go. I'm going to go to this. Uh, I was doing a, a word study on this, I am in you and you are in me and we are one, and I came upon this really interesting article, and it was written by um, a theologian. He's of the Catholic seminary, and I was just eating it up because it had a lot of weight to it, but one thing that this, this man said was he said that when he was a little boy, he was going through catechisms, and this verse came up, John 17, 20. It came up. It says, all of that, all of them may be one father, just as you are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us. And his little brain couldn't grasp what all of that meant. And sometimes mine is having trouble with it too. So, but he, he raised his hand and he asked the teacher, what does this mean that, I, that the Father is saying that you are in me and I am in you and that, that, that he wants us to be in, in us? And so his teacher said, are you having trouble understanding to, um, that you need to memorize this text? Because if you can't memorize this text, you're going to have to start all over in your catechisms. He says, oh, no, I have it memorized. But it, it ate at him. So then as an, as an older adult, he started to explore. He started to, he, that, that verse never left him because that question still remained in his heart. And so I loved his illustration. And so now he teaches in colleges. And he teaches this to his students. Um, so I'm going to first use water. H2O. So water is G. 
gas. Water is, let me look at my notes, um, ice. Water is liquid. Can we all agree that even though water is one thing, it can be three? Okay. All right, let me take this a step further. God is sun. God is Holy Spirit. And God is Father. Oops. Okay, so can we all agree that God is? So We've gotten one step. We've got the three in one. So now let's figure out where we are. Well, it says that we are in the sun. Here's us. And the sun is in God, the Father. And the Holy Spirit is in the Father. And the Father is in the Son. And the Son is in the Holy Spirit. And there we are, commingling, co-merging, coexisting one. So what I think is really cool, let me just take this a step further, is I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the, the Celtic knots, but those are a represent, representation of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The three is, I, I'm not doing it quite right. I, I, I practiced, I promised, but I wasn't in front of people. Anyways, you get it. You get it, you get it. Anyways, do you see the merging though? You just start merging. They merge, merge, merge. Merge, merge, merge. Okay. All right, so since we have, have we all affirmed in here that we are presently, right now, this day, present tense, right now, in Jesus? Okay, let's move on to the next thing that we know is true. We are seated in heavenly places. So we're going to go to Ephesians 2, 5, 6, 5 through 6. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So this, this uh, phrase, raised us up, in the Strong's, it means to rouse from the dead, to bless with life. We have been raised together with the resurrection life himself. We have The power has been given in through us to be raised from death, blessed to life, seated in Christ Jesus. And then let's just look at this uh, Colossians 3.1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above with Christ, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So this, if you notice the, the tense, what this passage is saying, it's since you have been, it already is done. It already has happened. We have, we have been raised, raised. When we were saved into salvation, the power of Life came in and that and we rose up in that moment and we are there currently. So we 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 see that this has happened with salvation. So 
maybe we can agree that our spirit man is in heavenly places. Can we, can we all agree on that? Okay. But what about our soul man? What about our mind and our will and our emotions and our body? Those things. Well, in John 17, 24, it says, and this is Jesus. Jesus is speaking and he's, he's speaking to the Father. He says, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me. Whoa. Jesus says, Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. Now, this is Jesus, and he's speaking to the Father while he's on earth about his desire. And he's saying, where I am, yet he's on the earth, speaking in present tense about his disciples. And he's asking them that they may be where I am to see my glory. So the heart of the Father, the heart of Jesus, is that his desire is that he wants us to come, and he wants us to be with us. He wants us to come into alignment, body, soul, spirit. And this word desire in the Strongs, it's to will, to determine, to love to do, to take delight in. I think his heart was just all kinds of stirred up. It was the will of his heart. It was the love of what he wanted in the most high fashion. To love to do it. It's like, oh, Papa, I would love this. I think that we should take these words with a lot of weight. I don't know about you, but when I am loving on the Lord, my heart starts to want what his wants. My heart starts to beat for what his heart beats for. And I'm sitting here, and I know that these words are true. And he's saying, my heart would love this, Father. My heart desires for this, Father. My ears are open. I'm, I'm listening, Lord. What is this that you're saying? Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given to me Be with me where I am. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Have anyone in this room, have any of you ever experienced the tangible presence of Jesus? Have you ever felt him move in your heart and in your life? Have you maybe even got goosebumps or a tingle? Or your hair stands up on the back of your head? Or have you felt the weight of his glory while you were here? Have, what does that do to your heart? What, how do you feel in that place? What, what goes on when those, what that's happening? It's tender. It's love. It's peace. It's, I mean, we could sit here all day and describe what that is like. But what, but he, what he's saying is, Look, also, he longs for us to be with him where he is. Where is he? Where is he? He is seated in heavenly places. My guess is, this is just my guess, that he desires this so much because he loves union. 
because he loves to love us, because he wants there to be no separation, because he wants to lavish his heart on us, because he wants to have a relationship. I, this is a bonus. This is a bonus. So we've established that he desires us to be with him where he is. But did you also see in this verse, it says, and then they will see my full glory. So the word see can be in the Strong's is to be a spectator, experience literally and figuratively, to behold, to consider, to look on, to perceive with our eyes. I don't know about you, but when I started like diving into the word see, I got pretty wrapped up into other passages where um, it talked about um, seeing. And this, this verse, these, this passage just like popped right out at me and it made a huge impact on the words that I just read. So in Luke 24, 36 and 39, it says, while they were still discussing all of this. Okay, so let me set this up for a second. Um, this is after Christ's crucifixion and he has been raised from the dead. The disciples are in the upper room at this point, okay? Luke 24, 36 through 39 says, while they were still discussing all of this, Jesus suddenly appeared right in front of their eyes. Startled and terrified, the disciples were convinced they were seeing a ghost. Standing there among them, he said, be at peace. I am the living God. Don't be afraid. Why are you so frightened? Don't let doubt enter your heart. See my pierced hands and feet. See for yourselves. It is I standing here alive. Touch me and know that my wounds are real. A spirit does not have a body of flesh and bones as you see that I am alive. Then he showed them his pierced hands and feet and let them touch his wounds. So this same exact word, I didn't write the number down, the Strong's number, but that same exact word, see, that he uses in the scripture that says, um, that says, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me is the same word that he used with the disciples when he was standing in front of them, proving to him that he had risen and that he is alive in the flesh now. See, it is me. See. And so what he was saying is open your eyes and perceive what is before you. Open your eyes and see what I have done. I once was dead, but now I am alive. I have resurrected and I have returned before you. Look and see I am before you right now. He's like, wake up is what he's saying. Don't be terrified. I'm not a ghost. Do you think maybe he had to say that to them? I have a whole, a whole slew of ideas why. But what I feel like the Lord is, is converging here for me personally is that he's saying, open your eyes and perceive what I have already given to you and what I have already done for you. It is before you right now. If you want to know what the word see in Hebrew is, it's thero. Theoro, see, perceive, open your eyes, believe. I am, bef it's, I am before you now. It is the real, tangible, 
presence. It's the real tangible, thero. Okay. I, let's see, I have to skip down because I already did that part. Okay, so we're going into some next level stuff now. Are you all ready? Some next level stuff. <laughs> oh. So at that same level that he gave and he wanted his disciples to experience, he is giving it to us. And he eagerly desires for us to be with him. And he is in the heavenly realms. He has ascended. I don't know, but this makes my heart explode. It's, it's like we have, it's like he wants us to have access to his heart. He wants us to have access to the blessings that are in him. He wants us to have access to a personal face-to-face -face relationship. Ephesians 1.3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So we have established that Jesus is with us here and now. He is in us, and we are in him. And we've also established that Jesus desires for us to be with him where he is. And that this is a now word. He wants, here's another word, koinonia. I got to look at how to spell this one. I know some of you have heard this word before. It's a Greek word. He wants koinonia, which is fellowship, communion with God. It's an intimacy. It's a bond that joins one to another. It's so sacred, and he desires this even above us desiring this. Like, he wants this more than we want it, <laughs> and I want it. But he wants, he really wants it. And so this is the dun, 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 dun. So he made a way. Access granted. <laughs> Access granted. So we're introducing right now the easy way. Because I am tired of sweating through stuff. I am tired of trying to work my way into something. I am tired of a formula for this and a formula for that. And how can I move God's heart if I do X, Y, Z? He said that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, amen. Yes and amen to this, please. So you guys want to know what the easy way is? The door. We are going to access by way of the door. Okay. Jesus says in John 10, 9, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. John 10, 7 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus is calling himself the door. Jesus, the door. The door equals Jesus. I said there were no equations, but I mean, okay, that's the easy button. I hit the easy button, the door. Jesus calls himself the door. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus is claiming he is the divine passageway, the door to what? The Father. 
Jesus calls himself the door. The way of salvation is through him. So when I look up uh, the word door in Hebrew, it is thyra, T-H-Y-R-A, thyra. And in Hebrew, thyra is a door. Huh. It is also a portal of entrance. It's the opening. It's the passageway. Jesus says that I am the door. I am the point of entrance. I am the opening. I am the passageway. So let's read a little bit further. In John 10, 9, and we're just going to reread, but we're going to go a little bit further in this verse. It says, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find green pastures. Hmm. They will come in and out. Hmm. So we can go in and we can go out of this door, Jesus, this passageway. You mean that me and you as sons and daughters, that we have been given access to go through Jesus, the door, to go in him and out of him, to see his full glory in heavenly places. Did we all not get to that conclusion together just now? We have followed the way, the path of, of the words of Jesus out of his mouth. So we have just now established that we can go in and out. Okay, here is one more verse. And I feel like I'm a, one of those people that I'm like, I have got to, pr I, I just have to know. And then I also like things that just keep me really safe, Lord. Just keep me safe. So I, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus, the door. And when we look at the word, the way, it is translated into, it's a proper road. It's a proper path. It's the proper mode. It, it means that we're, it's a journey on a highway. I don't know about you, but have any of you driven country back roads? And how they can be kind of bumpy and windy and yet sometimes end up in a place you didn't really expect. But the highway has been paved out. It's been laid out. It is a flat, smooth surface. It's been marked. It has all the road signs, and you know which way you're going. Well, if you have GPS sometimes, right? So, but I'm just saying that he is saying that he is the proper way. So we, have all, we all know that thieves and robbers that anyone that tries to enter the kingdom by any other fashion is a thief and a robber. But we know for a fact that we are safe, secure, and on the right path when we are going through Christ Jesus. How much time do I have left? Okay. Whew. What did you say back there? Okay, are we not all new creations and created in Christ Jesus? How, do, can we just all say that in here? We don't need to unpack that a ton. That we know that we're, we've been created all over again, that we're a new creation, and we're in, created in Christ Jesus. So 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, We have become an entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh 
and new. John 10.10, 10, Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. I believe that he wants us to take hold of all that he has come to do and has already given us. Like he's like, would you please take it? I have already done this for you. It's free. The, the road is paved. And I am the easy yoke that you can be with. So um, by taking hold, we must let our minds be renewed to these truths. I don't know, but this should ex excite us. Um, for me personally, just this, it seems elementary. That's good. We need that. We need some time to start with this very simple, the very simplistic things of the Lord and move with him there because it's in those foundational verses that our life begins to build and unfold in trust and in truth and agreement. And we can explore then new territories and new heights. And I think if we take time to explore the word, I'm not saying you have to do it like I did, but you explore those words and you will go deep into those passages that you will find that there are treasures upon treasures hidden there. For you to eat of and for you to drink of, they become your food. They become your life. They give sustenance to who you are in this world and who you are in him. So I believe that there are endless possibilities, endless territories, endless frontiers to navigate with him. That we get to be pioneers of a new day dawning. I almost like, Josh and I were talking about this conference. I don't know if you guys know this, but this was like a six, eight month like vision a lot, while back. And so we've been praying into it and just seeking, the God, seeking God about it. And one thing I really felt that the Lord was saying was it's a new day dawning. And I just about named the conference New Day or New Day Dawning. But I wanted to give you guys context of what we were actually going to be doing here. So we, we kept with Ascended Life. But what I really believe what the Lord is doing is saying there is a new day dawning. Your heart is being awakened. You're, the eyes are coming open. You're going to begin to see and move and have your being with me in such a new way that the lights are going to all turn on and you are going to have hope in your heart. And the sun is going to rise and you are going to see that he is moving and living and breathing in us in this place for this hour, for this time, for our nation, for the earth. All of creation is groaning and yearning for the revealing of the sons and the daughters to be revealed. And so there's this new day dawning upon us. And I feel like the Lord is saying, do you want to be a part of it? I do. And so I am here saying, Lord, show me, teach me your ways. I will start on the floor if I have to all over again because I want to be where you are and I want to do what you're doing and I want to see what you're seeing and I want to say what you're saying because what you have weight, what, you, what carries weight in you carries weight in me and what carries weight in you will carry weight in the earth. We could easily get stuck in idleness. Going around the same mountain, you know, woe is me, poor me, eyes are on me, eyes are on my situation, eyes, eyes on all the problems in the world, eyes on, you know, and we're just, we're here, we're just, oh, Lord, oh, God. Or we can lift our eyes up. And we can see what's going on because we are already seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And he's given us the authority to be there by the blood through the resurrection life of who he is. He has given us the power that, we, that caused us to rise up into that place this day, the day of our salvation. Not when we die, not when we're dead and gone. We don't have to wait to experience these things when 
Life has no more and death is overcome. No, he said death has been defeated. He has overcome death and he holds the keys of Hades in his hands. So we get to be the victorious ones. We get to have life and resurrection life in this day, in this hour, and it belongs to us now. So what I'm wanting to transition into is a time for you guys to just take hold of everything that we just spoke about. We just spoke about Jesus being the door, the way, the truth, the life. And we've talked about that we're already in. We've established that. We've established that we're seated inside of Christ, in, in Jesus, in heavenly places. So um, what I want to... this. What I'm getting ready to do with you, I do sometimes daily, sometimes more than once a day. Uh, this is my mode of prayer anymore. Like, I just go straight here. Because, again, what did I say? I want to see what he's seeing. I want to hear what he's saying. I want to know what the, what's on the Father's heart. And what better, what better way than to switch my, my mind into this reality it's actually just a remembrance. I'm remembering who I am. I mean, things happen and the day goes on. And it's not that I don't know that I'm a son or a daughter or that, you know, Jesus did this for me or it's already happened. It's just sometimes things get really busy and I have to remind myself. And so I take moments out of my day to remind myself. I go into a quiet place. And honestly, if I could do it, I would do it more. Um, because it has been the most transforming thing in my life. Remember when I said that there, something pivotally happened to me about five years ago, and this is it. This is it. Um, I used to maybe have a dream every couple months or so that I would write down, you know, and I would interpret those. And those are great, and those are still valid and, and all those kind of things. But I will tell you that my daytime vision of seeing of, of, of connecting with the Father has just exploded exponentially. So um, let's prepare our hearts just for a minute. I believe it's incredibly important for us to remember that we can't do this with a big brain, okay? Our, our big old heads just sometimes get in the way. And so honestly, what does it say? It says in Matthew 19, 14, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belong to such as these. So the Lord is saying, we've got to be childlike, like little children. He says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And then in Luke 12, 32, it says, fear not little flock. Fear not my little ones. Fear not. So he's even telling us, don't be afraid. Just let the weight fall off. And, and, and all the things that are swirling and surrounding our thought, my, our thought life, the weights of the world, they can, we can just let those go right now. We're just going to put them on pause. We're going to drop them off. He says, fear not, little ones, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And in Revelations 4.1, this one really gets me. John, he is human, flesh, and blood. And he writes this in Revelation. He says, then as I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven and the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast and the voice said come up here the invitation has been made Jesus himself is the door we do not have to strive 
we simply get to agree with what the word has already confirmed. We have been raised with Christ Jesus and we are seated with him in heavenly places. We are welcome and he desires for us to be with him, to see his full glory. If we can maybe turn that music up just a little bit to kind of drown out any background noises. If just close your eyes and get, just try to be comfortable. Relax your arms and even relax the muscles in your face. Take some big, deep breaths. And remember, we're just going to, this This is one thing I love to do. Um, I can, I'll envision myself being like a hot air balloon. And you know how hot air balloons have like bags of sand on them to keep them grounded? Um, I will um, just kind of see if something pops in my head that I'm thinking about or worrying about. I kind of see that as a bag of sand and I drop it off the side. And if anything else comes up, I just drop it off the side. And before you know it, my my balloon is free. I'm not tied down to anything and I'm, whew, I'm free. So I'm just gonna let you guys just take some deep breaths. <sighs> okay. So I just want you to picture Jesus, the door. Just look at him. He is a safe place. He's a beautiful, beautiful one. And we have been given access to go through the door. So just by faith, go ahead and step, step through that door. Just step right there. Okay, so now we are inside of Jesus right now, the door. We're in the framework of who he is. We can feel his love. We can feel his compassion. What do you see and what are you feeling? Take some big, deep breaths of knowing that you are in. You are in. Mm, we just thank you. Oh, Papa, you are so good, Jesus. You're so beautiful. Maybe, maybe you're experiencing some light. So we're in the door. Let's go ahead and go all the way through. Let's go all the way through the door. So, so where is Jesus? It says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. So well, let's just use that scripture. We are seated with Jesus in heavenly places, and he's seated next to the Father. So let's just kind of, let's look, let's look around a little bit. Maybe we will go ahead and just look to the left. To the left is the Father, because we're seated at, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. So, oh, Father. Oh, Papa, there you are. Look at you in all your splendor and all your glory. Just to see you, just to see you. Oh. And the radiant light and the radiant glory coming off of you, Father. Oh. And your eyes, oh, your eyes. Oh. Lord, your eyes. Wow. 
So I know it's really, really hard, but if you can and if you want to, if you want to take a look around, because we're in heavenly places right now, and the Father is right there, and He's, wow! But if you can and if you want to, just turn a little bit and look out. Oh, look out and see. Where, where, what are you seeing before you? I mean, there's, we know that the, in the Word it talks about that there's streets of gold, and there's, there's rainbows, and there's emerald rainbows. And there's the sea of glass. And, and we're by the thrones. And, and there's, there's elders, and, the, and there's saints, and there's angels, and there's gates. Oh, there's gates. And there's a river, and there's a tree that's growing on either side of the river. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. All the possibilities and all the things. Whoa. Wow. Oh, Jesus. Oh. oh. Let's take one moment. Let's just take one moment. Let's just take one moment and say, Jesus, what is something that you are saying about me right now. Jesus, what are you what are you saying about me? He's so tender. He's so beautiful. My spirit is just doing flips. My spirit is undone in the presence of the Father and the Son. And let's not forget, Holy Spirit's there too. Holy Spirit. Just captivated. This is, this is so grand. This is so great. It, it kind of feels like home. Oh, wait. You are my home. Oh gosh, you, you're my home. I feel like I've made it. I feel like I'm home. God, you're so good. You're so beautiful. Let's just thank him. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for being the door. Thank you for being the highway. Thank you for, thank you for your life. Thank you for the power and the resurrection. Thank you for making way, making access. Thank you. Thank you that this is mine. Thank you that this is ours. Thank you that you've already given this to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can come here anytime. Thank you that this is your desire. You desire us to be here with you where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, let's take a deep breath. This is some this is the hard part for me. It's to transition. Oh, let's take a deep breath. Wiggle your toes. Go ahead and turn the music down. Oh, because I'll just keep going. Just wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your toes. Oh, take a couple deep breaths. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Lord.